Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, I've got a couple giant stories for you. Starting with an update on the RTX 3080 crash issues, AMD's 4th gen Ryzen 7 beats Intel's 10,900K in gaming, and next gen Ryzen goes 5 gigahertz. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, I have another follow-up to the issues plaguing some RTX 3080 users. For one, Nvidia just released a new driver that promises to help the issues, and it does. But unfortunately, according to tests by PC World, it does so by dialing back the clocks of the faster third-party cards. Basically, it confirms all the discussion up to this point, that it's definitely a hardware issue instead of a driver problem, ultimately coming from the choice of capacitors third-party board partners made. Luckily, the issue only really occurs past 2 GHz, so the GPUs affected will still be extremely fast. The only real problem is that you won't be able to get any good overclocks or anything like that, given the type of capacitors your GPU uses. And to take things further, Nvidia has finally responded to the issue. In a statement given to the senior editor of PC World, Nvidia states, quote, Regarding partner board designs, our partners regularly customize their designs and we work closely with them in the process. The appropriate number of POS caps versus MLCC groupings can vary depending on the design and is not necessarily indicative of quality. Basically, it's a non-answer. From what we've heard, board partners didn't have enough time to properly test cards, so if that's right, it really isn't their fault, to an extent. Either way, they do seem to be fixing the issue moving forward, and current card owners will still get plenty of performance. Now, while the RTX 3000 series is right around the corner, why not learn how hardware actually works with today's sponsor, Brilliant, the online learning tool with a focus on math, science, and computer science. So it's the perfect place to expand your knowledge on computers. I mean, from artificial neural networks to search engines and even quantum computing, whether you want to learn for fun or a career, Brilliant has you covered. And what's even bigger is that it's easy to learn. They actually show you how the concepts work instead of just telling you. Plus, there's daily challenges to keep you learning more. So don't wait. Learn the deeper side of hardware at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And the first 200 people who visit the link get 20% off your annual premium today. Next up for today, AMD may have done it. And I mean really done it. For those who haven't followed AMD's newest CPUs, they're fantastic all-around processors. But the one place where AMD still loses sometimes is in gaming. Now, as I've been over before, that requires a top GPU and fairly low resolutions. But simply put, when the CPU is a bottleneck instead of the GPU, Intel CPUs tend to do better. And that's been the case since AMD released their first-gen Ryzen. Well, that looks to have changed. In a recent Ashes of the Singularity benchmark that was found and shared by Tom Apisak, one of AMD's upcoming CPUs was tested. And starting things off, when we look at the processor, you can see that it's a Ryzen 7 5800X, which means the recent rumors suggesting AMD would skip Ryzen 4000 on their desktop parts are true. Not only that, but it's an 8-core, 16-thread part, similar to Ryzen 3000, so as we thought, AMD won't be upping the core count on Zen 3. At least they're Zen 3-based desktop parts. Now, the big news here is the results. As you can see, Tom Apisak compared the 5800X to Intel's newest 10-core 10900K, and it actually beats the Intel part, at least in CPU performance. And I say that because when we take the GPU into play, it overall wins, but just barely. Keep in mind that that could have been a better 2080, I don't know. But the number one thing here is that we're talking 8 versus 10 cores, so the comparable Intel i7 will certainly get crushed. And Ashes of the Singularity is a great benchmark because it scales fairly well with more cores. Now, before you say it, the Intel benchmark does have less RAM, but another test was done at 1080p, which shouldn't be much of a difference, and the Ryzen part still won. Tom Apisak only showed the test against the lower RAM model because it was the same tester, and he didn't have a 10900K with that amount of RAM. Either way, this is once again AMD's 8-core part versus Intel's 10. Of course, as always, this is one benchmark, and we don't have the clocks on the AMD part, but this is still huge news. If AMD's Ryzen 7 can actually compete with Intel's i9 in gaming, Intel will be in real trouble. And with such a big IPC increase, as well as a likely clock increase, it would mean AMD's parts will almost certainly see a huge jump in professional workloads as well. And if that ends up being the case, Intel won't stand a chance. 
And speaking of clocks, AMD may have done it again in today's final story. This one comes from the German YouTuber PC Welt. Now, before I get to it, I will say that I had a couple German speakers from the GamerMail Discord server go over it, and a thanks for those. But for one, PC Welt is apparently a magazine as well as a channel, and every year they build a super high-end gaming PC with the best parts available, and they're given those by the manufacturer, so they definitely do have some inside information. But, according to the translators, the following information is what they're hearing, so this is more of a rumor at this point, but it's by someone who may very well know. Either way, according to what they're hearing, AMD's Ryzen 9 5900X, so once again the 5000 series, will come with 12 cores and 24 threads, so they definitely aren't changing the core count. But believe it or not, they're hearing that the Ryzen 9 5900X can clock up to 5 GHz. That's right, if this is correct, AMD's Ryzen 5000 will finally break the 5 GHz threshold. Now, that obviously doesn't mean it won't come at a cost. According to them, the 5900X will come with a TDP of up to 150 watts, which is quite a bit higher than the 3900X, but AMD obviously had some room to move up anyway. Really, at the end of the day, AMD's next-gen CPUs are looking like a huge jump in performance, and given other games reach anywhere near our first benchmark, it'll be a massive hit for AMD. And of course, those CPUs are coming very soon, so make sure to subscribe to find out more when that happens. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's Ryzen 5000 series or are you more excited for their next-gen GPUs? And don't forget to check out Brilliant in the description. And as always, have a great day!